everyone. I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to the Happiness Hour. Every week, photographers from all over the country join us to connect, inspire, and create. My guests have shared their images, their stories behind their photos, and their favorite photography tips to help us all improve our photography skills. The schedule for our upcoming presentations has been updated, and I am super excited to bring you a variety of topics and introduce you to some new photographers who will spark your creativity, inspire you to look at the world a little differently. You can find that schedule on my website at lindanickel.com, and the links to the Happiness Hour YouTube channel is linked to there as well. Tonight's guest is Stephen Mack. Stephen returns to the Happiness Hour for the fourth time. In his previous pre presentations, Stephen has showed us how to create dreamy portraits in his talk called The Painterly Photographic Portrait. And in the segment called Still Life in Quarantine, he showed us how to create intricate and stunning still life images. And in the fall of 2021, he showed us how to retouch a portrait from start to finish. Stephen's based in New York and is primarily a portrait and headshot photographer, but his assignments are widely varied and have included fashion, lifestyle, and event assignments. His work can be found through his website, gnomist.com. And if you're on Instagram, you can follow him at gnomistphoto. In tonight's presentation, an introduction to using off-camera flash, Stephen will cover some of the technical aspects such as sync speed, TTL, and light fall off. Stephen, I am thrilled to welcome you back to the Happiness Hour. Thank you, Linda. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, this one's going to be a little different. It's going to be very real world sort of demo time here. Um, there's going to probably be a lot of uh, fiddling with things and sort of back and forth. It may not be as smooth as some of the other presentations that I've done where I've gone from like A to Z. So during the downtimes, if people just want to chime in, unmute and just ask a question, I will absolutely answer that. Um, and I think the first question I have is for everybody else. Uh, do you use Flash at all? Um, you can just put it in the chat if you say yes, no. I'm also curious, uh, you know, what questions generally people have about it. I think one of the things that I found, um, oh, definitely, I saw, I saw, uh, yes, OCF for the win, for sure. I have to tell you, I was always kind of scared of it. And, you know, I was like, oh, no, I'm just going to do natural light. I'm never going to use a flash because I don't want to kind of get into that. But now that I have, I have seen the light. I actually travel with one uh, when I go on trips because you never know when you're going to need an extra, you know, punch of light, and it can add so much to your image and just give it that extra something. So, um, just going to start at the very beginning here with. I'm going to just show you the equipment that I have. If you can see it, this is a Profoto A1. Um, I use Profoto for basically all my studio lighting and they have a range of lights from these really small, like handheld lights that actually kind of look, I'll just take this off, but kind of almost just like this called a click, but it's a little bigger and they're used for, um, iPhones. So they connect over, uh, Bluetooth, uh, to your phone and then you can, it syncs with the little flash and you can get some amazing, uh, results with your phone and these little flashes. Then up from that, they've got this, and this is the A1, as I mentioned, which is very similar to flashes from Canon or Nikon or any other brand. But I've sort of bought into this whole ecosystem. And this flash can be paired wirelessly with their wireless remotes, which I use for my other strobes. So one of the great things about this is what I'm going to be talking about today works for a flash like this. And it works with, um, hold on a second, let me see where I put it. So this is their, this is their next one up. This is the A2, and this looks like sort of a normal studio strobe. And then this one 
This is a Profoto B10. And basically you might say like, well, what would be the difference between all of these exactly? And really it's just about power, the power of the light, how much light can come out of this and the refresh rate, how quickly can it cycle again to do another flash? So these are the ones that I primarily use for my portraits, but I will often pair them with one of these in the back to do like a highlight along the person's, you know, hair or, uh, or you can put this in the distance and make it look like a sunset. Actually, I may try to do that today. That could be kind of cool. I'll show you that effect. Uh, so we'll see. So anyway, all right. So first, um, I'm going to share a graphic with you that is important. And uh, let's see. And again, anything, even when I'm in these little down times as I'm finding stuff, if anyone has a question, just let me know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to answer your question, you asked, you know, does anybody use flash? There's a, it's about half of no's and a few yeses. And then I've got Jason saying it changed his life. So. <laughs> yeah, it it's it's like one of those things, like once you do it, you're just, you're sold. Yeah. Um, it is so powerful. So because it's not just to light a dark room. I mean, it's to you. And I'm going to show you some of that a little bit. So the first thing I want to I want to talk about um, the exposure triangle with all of you who uh, are photographers and work regularly will know what this is. So let me just show that if you can see my screen there. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's big enough. Um, you can see that. Okay, Linda. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we all know that adjusting these three parameters controls exposure. So you lower your ISO, you raise your shutter speed, um, you know, to darken, or so you raise your ISO to brighten an image, you lower your shutter speed to make an image brighter, and you can um, widen your aperture to make an image brighter as well. And you can see those arrows there that show like the direction to make things brighter. Now, the interesting thing about a flash, and we know all of these control the ambient light in your shot. So I can change any one of these uh, to make it uh, an image lighter or darker. And then I can control certain effects based off of which one that I choose. So we know that if I make my f-stop smaller, or I guess higher, I don't ever know, like the aperture smaller and the f-stop higher, you get much larger depth of field, but then I can compensate for that loss of light by adjusting my shutter speed or my ISO. All right, so we know all this, and hopefully I'm not, uh, this isn't particularly new. So the interesting thing about your flash is your flash, and I'm gonna be kind of half lying here, but just trust me, shutter speed does not affect your flash. Okay, so shutter speed just affects the ambient light. And what, what I mean by that is, is when you, when the flash fires, it's firing so fast that it doesn't, um, it doesn't get affected by the shutter speed because it's firing faster than the shutter is doing the sort of the, the curtain uh, to expose the image. So I'm going to show you an example of that um, in a minute. But before I do, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the settings um, on my flash, which are, are similar to other brands. I have used Nikon in the past, but all the concepts are generally the same. I don't know if you can see this here, but, but basically I, uh, you know, basically turn the power on and then it tells me sort of the, the, the intensity of it. Different flashes have different intensities, but this one goes on a scale of, uh, sort of 0 0.1 to 10 being the max. Now it doesn't, it's just a, it's just a question of brightness. 10 on this is definitely not the same as 10 on this. So don't think like, oh, if I put these both at 10, I'm gonna get the same amount of light. It just means I'm getting the 10 is the max power for this light, whatever it is. I think it's like 500 Watts or something. And then 10 is the max power of this, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the same amount of light that's coming out of them. So, so I'm not gonna, basically for, for this, it's actually pretty simple. The two main settings you have to worry about are TTL, which stands for through the lens and manual. And on TTL, what happens is the flash and the camera or the camera 
controls the flash or talks to the flash about the exposure of the scene and says, wow, you know what, this scene's dark. I'm going to need this much more, this much more light. And it automatically tells the flash what to do and how much brightness it should, it should emit to, to properly expose the scene. I'm going to show you that in a second here. So, um, and essentially, if you bought a flash and you just have it on your camera and you do that, there's really nothing. It's just like a flash on your iPhone or a flash on a little point and shoot. It works exactly the same. So when you take the flash off the camera and I have it connected here with this cable, this is basically just um, a Nikon cable that let's see if I can get my I'm using this new iPhone thing that pans. So I have to move my face to get it to pan. So I just have it connected at the base of the flash to the top of the, the flash shoe of the camera. And then allows me to hold it. So you'll, a lot of times you'll see wedding photographers with their hands up in the air and the camera on the other side so they can get sort of more dramatic lighting. Because admittedly, no one really likes the type of flash where it's just right in your face, unless you're going for that sort of journalistic type uh, look. So that's one of the great things about moving the flash off of the camera is you can control things like the angle of light um, and, uh, and you can even bounce it then off the ceiling or off of walls. So when I was starting off, I would, uh, when I was doing events and such, I would go like this. I would have my camera in one hand and my flash on the other, and I would find walls and ceilings and white surfaces, point it there. I'd have the flash on the TTL setting and the, everything would just happen magically. I mean, it was kind of amazing. I really didn't have to think about it. But I don't do that anymore. I tend to do everything manual now because I'm working much more slowly. I'm, I'm in a very controlled environment with my clients. I'm not at a wedding. I'm not at an event. But if I was, I would most certainly do uh, TTL. So when on TTL, let me just, um, hold on, let me turn on the camera. So I'm not sure if they're going to see this. It's going to be, it's very hard to see, but right here, there's a little, um, Plus minus, and if I, it's hey, very Steve. very yeah. Hey Stephen, uh, do you still need your? Um, oh, uh, sorry, no. Graphic. I was, I'm sorry. That might help. That might help us see the back of your camera. There, there we go. go. Yeah. Okay. So um, right there, mm -hmm. there's a little plus minus, and that's called exposure compensation for TTL, because sometimes TTL won't get it right. Maybe. I don't know, maybe there's like a dark wall or something and it thinks, oh, I'm trying to make that dark wall brighter. Then you can adjust this to say, you know what, compensate darker or sorry, compensate lighter or whatnot, depending on how you want to um, uh, fine tune the exposure. So I'm just going to show you. Okay, so we're going to do that. So I've got uh, Moana here. A funny story about Moana is uh, I was at Disneyland in California and I was at the Disney store and uh, saw this doll, which I bought for my niece, but I thought it was so cool. I kept it because there's all this amazing detail. So you'll see in the uh, you'll see in the photos uh, some of the amazing. And I use I use her when I'm testing sort of lights and stuff, and I just want to try different things. Uh, so she's become very helpful. And then behind her, uh, for those of you maybe you do food or uh, these are really great uh, backdrops from a from a company called V Flat, and V Flat makes. Uh, these panels in sort of different finishes. I mean, it's all fake. It's like a photograph, but this is sort of a stucco. They make wood, they make marble. And a lot of times people will take food and put that on there and they're, they're, you can totally wash them. So these are really neat. So I've used these for still lifes as well if I want to create different environments. So I've got Moana in front of this backdrop and I am just going to, my flash is on, camera is on. Um, now it's going to be, you're not going to really be able to see my camera, unfortunately. Now I'm going to start sharing my screen here with uh, Capture One. So Capture One is what I use for um, uh, my photography, for my processing and for tethering. And for those of you who don't know, tethering is I have my camera connected with this USB uh, cable to my computer on my desk. So when I take the photo, it does not go to the memory card in the camera. It goes directly into the computer. And that's how I shoot constantly. I mean, and that's another thing. I now, when I do a shoot, I travel with my laptop. And if I can, I have that set up so I can really see during the shoot what my images look like. So I'm not constantly looking at this small little screen. 
Um, okay, actually, I'm going to turn. So, just one other thing, and I, I, I'm using a mirrorless camera. This is a Nikon Z7 II. And one of the things about mirrorless, of course, is there's no optical viewfinder. So what happens is, is when you turn, um, I think I can show you this. Let me try one second. So I have, the, you can see the screen. Let me see if I can point it to Moana there. So I have, I'm going to, let me do something here. I'm going to, I'm going to darken, let me uh, lower my ISO here. No, it's not doing it. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Hold on one second. Let me. The flash is on. I have to turn the flash off. Okay. So I'm going to lower my ISO because those of you who have uh, mirrorless cameras will see. Okay. So now it, the screen is black because I'm underexposed. Everything is too dark. My my ISO is at eighty. Uh, my shutter speed is at two hundred, and my f-stop is four point five. So this is too dark. Now what happens is. That doesn't help me if I have a flat, you know, I, I need to be able to frame and see what I'm doing. So when I connect the flash and then I turn it on, watch what happens to the back of the, of the camera. It brightens up. So this is not showing me a true representation of my scene. I'm oh, sorry, one second, the camera, turn, the flash turned back. It's not showing me a true, representa true, true representation of my scene. It's brightening the scene artificially because it knows it's too dark and I'm using a flash, I need to see what I'm doing. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, is that clear? It's sort of compensating. Um, all right, so let's let's point back to Moana and I'm gonna just uh, focus that. And um, I, so I'm gonna turn the, I'm gonna turn the flash off just for, for right now. And let me share my screen. And right, so you can see capture one. And what's nice about this is you can actually see my camera settings on the left hand side there, which is super helpful. So you can see all of that. So I have the flash off and I am going to just take a picture and um, I did two on accident. And you can see the image is dark. Uh, this always kind of blows my mind. Uh, is just how much information these cameras pick up. Like I can <laughs> just boost the exposure and, but for all intents and purposes, it's dark. So we're just gonna, it's dark and you can't see anything. So it's, it's um, underexposed. So now I'm going to turn on flash and I'm just gonna put it sort of parallel to the, to the lens here. So it's sort of a traditional flash. And I'm going to point it at Moana, and I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to do this and see what happens. And I have it on the TTL. So what's going to happen is the camera is going to analyze the scene, and, and the flash is sending out micro bursts of light. We can't see it to determine the exposure. The camera will tell the flash, I need this much light to get a proper exposure. So we're just going to see what's going to, ha what's going to happen. None of this has been practiced. Um, so let's uh, do that focus it and I'm gonna flash and then you're gonna see on the screen what comes up and there we go and it's, it looks horrible no one wants this photo it's it's just like the, it's like everything you hate about flash is in this photo it's like it looks like she's being arrested and uh no one no one wants that look it's not a good look but it's a really good starting point because you're gonna we're, we can talk about a few concepts here so now the TTL, when I first showed you this, um, I know it's a little hard. I have to, I'll stop my screen so you can see this, is uh, remember I was at seven something when I was just kind of playing around. So the camera set the flash to uh, 4.1 power, all right? All right, let me share, uh, share this again. Um, oh, sorry, one second. Okay. Um, I see there are some questions on, uh, Linda, if you can monitor the okay. chat and just chime in and just like interrupt me, it's totally fine. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just turn off the TTL for now, but for those of you who have not worked with a flash before, just try it first, play with it. 
And then what you can do is when I turn the TTL off, it stays at 4.1. So you can think of it as kind of a way to get you to a number that might work initially. And then you turn off the TTL and then I can, sorry, let me turn this off again. Sorry. So I turn the TTL back on and you see the little um, exposure compensation is there. When I turn it off and, and I'm gonna do this dial and, and the big number doesn't change at all, just the compensation. For this for the sensor for the sensitivity of how much light it's going to put in or not if i turn off ttl and i'm on manual now i'm controlling the light by with this dial i'm raising and lowering lowering it so 4.1 is what the camera said worked and it worked for, for where the flash was of course if i move the flash around things are going to change and we're going to talk about that in a second just want to pause here is there any questions or anything before i move on no nope, mostly comments you're good okay so, um, all right, so the next um, kind of technical thing I'm gonna show you. This is, I'm gonna demonstrate this too. So this is, this is kind of the best graphic I could find. It's gonna be a little hard to see, but I, I really liked it because um, I didn't want this to be too technical, but this is a demonstration of how light falls off. It's also called the inverse square law. So I don't wanna get into it, but I'm just gonna say that light falls off, becomes darker faster as you move away from the source of light. So for example, if you look at the source of light here, and then I must, let's say one meter away is 100%. If I go two meters, it's 25% as bright as it was just one meter earlier. And as you go off, light slowly then slowly kind of recedes. So it light falls off like a, like a, like a logarithmic sort of graph like this. And why is that important? We can do a lot with a flash knowing this. I'm gonna show you a demo of that right now. I can make that white background appear dark gray, or I can have it make it appear white. So I'm gonna show you that just by moving the light and where it is in relation to everything else. So let's, um, let's uh, so, so we know that we want Moana's face to be properly exposed. So based off of this graph here, if I put the light very close to Moana's face and expose her face, because the light is so close, as we go away from, from her in distance to the background, the background should be very dark because it's so close to her. I don't know if that makes sense. I have to kind of uh, show that one second. Um, a lot of this, I just have to say, is very, um, uh, you have to kind of experience it. You just have to kind of play with it and see. So let, let, let's talk about, uh, let me share this. So let's use this as an example. So we know um, I had the flash very close to the camera. I had it actually right at the lens. So what that means is here, the light falls off and starts to get darker very quickly, but then doesn't get as dark as with distance. So what that means is if her face is exposed, the background will also probably be pretty exposed correctly. There's not going to be a lot of difference in brightness at this distance between her face and that background background. And that's why this photo looks so terrible. This is this is that's why it's like that, because there's not a lot of dimension going on there. And also the shadow and the angle and all that other stuff. So now I'm going to do something. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to take flash. Let me turn it back on. And um there's something I haven't mentioned yet. I have to get back to that, to the shutter speed, but I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Once, let's just do this. So, okay. So now I'm gonna put this very close to her face. I'm gonna take the picture. Now that's gonna be, that should be horribly overexposed, right? Okay, so that's fine. So I'm not gonna change anything on the camera. 
but I'm going to lower the flash power. So I'm just changing the dial. Now, unfortunately, I can only go as low as two, and that may be, they may, may not be low enough. So I'm going to take the picture again. Okay, it's getting better. Okay, and then, but it's still not enough. She's still way too bright. So now what I can do um, is I can control, I can adjust aperture or ISO because remember shutter speed does not affect the flash because the flash is firing too quickly. So I'm going to raise, um, stop down my, you remember the right terms of raise or stop down, whatever. So I'm going to go to a higher F-stop to close down my aperture. So let's try, I think you can see on the screen. Oh, hold on, let me go to, let me go back to this. One second. Okay, so you can see the F stop there. I'm at 6.3. So let's try this again. And let's see what that does. Ooh, isn't that cool? Is That's a huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah. Now, I literally just told you how I do all my portraits in this like one little bit right here. So, um, cause if you go look at my work, it all looks like kind of like this. So, so here we have, um, I'm really happy with this, by the way, this slide, <laughs> that couldn't have worked out better. So you have this super dramatic portrait. It looks like she's sort of in this like cloudy kind of background thing. And there's like a ton of drama. And that's a white background. You saw it. That's this. And just because, so because the light is so close to her face, it quickly falls off and goes darker as you get to the background. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, so that, so being off camera like this allows me to move it to the side, give a nice angle, and then, um, uh, play with the, uh, the, uh, the, the distance, the relationship between the, uh, the subject and the background in terms of the light. Now, the other thing I could have done, so I have her there. Now, let's say I still wanted the background to darken. I could do two things. I could move the subject closer to the camera, or I, sorry, let me back this up. I can change the distance between her and the background, either by moving her or moving the background. So I'm going to, I'm going to move the background. So now when I do this, the background will probably almost be black. Yeah, uh, that's out of focus, but hold on one second. Stephen, does it matter where you position the flash? No, I mean, so I put it here. So the reason why I put it here, this this angle, is would you mean in relation to like here or here yeah, or here? Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. It's just it's sort of the look that you want, the effect. Let me let me do this one again because I want to show you something. There's a really great. Um, See if that's in focus. There you go. I mean, that's 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 just great. <laughs> um, <laughs> everyone loves it when you're super excited about your own work. But anyway, that's a great <laughs> demo. Uh, but you get that kind of. I mean, look, I mean, look at that. You would never know. Yeah. I'm in this room with this white background and all this stuff, and I got something that dramatic. Um, so to answer your question, Linda, it matters in the sense, and this is a great segue to this, in terms of the emotion you want to get out of the subject. So I did this angle. This is a very classic angle right here. So if I put the light here, you get, I mean, this is a Moana as a character. She doesn't have exactly correct features, but you get sort of that very classic kind of Rembrandt type lighting. Now, what would happen if I do this? Because we all know this, this little thing. Let's try that. Yeah, that's the scary, 
you know, yeah. campfire thing. So, and then what about this? So I just put it above, you know, that just looks kind of weird. It's like she's maybe being interrogated or something. So it sets the mood of the, of, of your position or your flash. Yeah. If, if I, there's a fantastic, um, uh, I don't know where it is, but it shows all the different lighting positions for, for flash. And it gives you examples. Like if you put it here, you put it here, what it does to somebody's face. There's even an animated one. I, I don't want to spend time Googling it where it shows a light going around a person and you see all their shadows change. It's really interesting. It makes a huge difference. And then, you know, of course, I could do it from this side. And that should be pretty nice. Does it matter how close you are to their to the subject? The flash? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So that's that's what I'm saying here. So so something you need to realize is if I'm closer to them, they're going, the light will, will fall off faster. So the shadows will be more dramatic. Okay. And then the background, of course, will get darker. And of course, there's going to be more of a spread, you know, so if I put the light over here, now this is, I have to adjust my, because I'm moving the light now farther back. Hold on, let me let me do it over there so if maybe you can yeah, see. We can better. see it a little bit better. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. So if I'm here, now, if I'm way back here, two things are going to happen. We know the background is going to be much brighter white. Or it's going to be. It's not going to be black anymore because remember the fall off isn't as great. Remember this is where the drama happens. This is where the fall off happens very quickly from the light. But as you get farther away, the fall off is far less. So the, the background and her are gonna be more similarly exposed as opposed to when I put it here. Cause when it's here, it's like super bright. So I'm exposing for her face and that gets super, super dark. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put it here. And I'm gonna have to play with this because of the, cause I move, I'm moving the light. So let's just try this. See? So, and this, so two things happened. The, the background got brighter and I'm lighting more of her cause I'm farther away cause the light spreads out. So by bringing the light closer, you know, I'm seeing, uh, actually, wait, I can think I can, yeah, I don't, this sort of, I mean, you get it, it's like a flashlight. Um, right. That's just the modeling light. So, uh, so yes, now, the other thing I want to mention is you can do a lot with bounce and bouncing a flash off of surfaces. So for example, I have here quite simply, the piece of white uh, paper and I can point, you know, this could be a wall, it could be a ceiling, whatever. I'm going to do a bunch of different things with this. So I'm going to put, I'll do a couple of things actually. Before I do this, I want to show you one other thing. One of the great things about this system is they have a lot of wonderful attachments and this applies to all of ProPhoto's um, uh, uh, strobes. So for this, I can put on uh, this sort of soft diffuser. So this gives me a less harsh light. It's like a it's like a frosted dome. I can also put on gels. Now, why would this be important? Because, and that's going to be another slide I was going to show you. This this adjusts the color temperature of the light. I'm not going to get into that right now. We'll talk about that a little later. And then the other thing I can put in is called a grid. And what the grid does is it stops the spread of the light. So this grid is uh, the numbers rubbed off. I'm not really sure. It says, I think, 10, meaning it's going to limit the light spread to 10 degrees. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So I'm going to just I'm going to just point the light at the uh, at the background, I don't know if I can, let me move Moana out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna just put it here. And I'm gonna put the flash. So I, I, have the, I have the flash next to the camera, like I when I started out. And I'm just gonna turn the TTL back on because I don't wanna play with the adjustments or anything. So let's try this, let's... Uh... Okay. So there's the flash. Let's see what happens. 
Yeah, awful. So now, I don't know if it's gonna show up, we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna put this grid on it. I'm gonna show you the difference. Yeah, it's hard to see, but you see the, so if I compare these two, see it limited the spread of the light, the one on the right, because that's with the grid. I said, well, I don't want the light to spread. So why am I bringing this up? Because I now want to, I want to control the spread and I want to point it to this white piece of paper. And I don't want it to affect anything else in the scene. I just want to shoot it right at this paper. And then this paper is going to bounce the light back onto her. I do this kind of stuff all the time. So let's give that a try. I'm going to keep it on TTL and see what it does. Maybe it's just, so if, if I'm not a liar, this should uh, automatically adjust the brightness from 6.9 to, um, to what's necessary. So I'm going to Point it right down. Oh, I need another. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Hold on one second. Uh, you need an assistant. I need an assistant now. Hold on. Oh, wait, I know what I can do. There we go. Okay. So I have it. I don't know if you can see it. So it's on the table and I have it pointed up and it's going to hit this, the, the paper. And that's gonna give sort of a soft light on her face. Now imagine this in the real world with people. So you've got people, you have in an apartment or a room, you have a white wall, you point this flash at the wall, it's a soft light. Though. So let's give that a try and see what happens. Ah, look at that. Exactly. Wow. So you get this beautiful, soft light so just, i mean this is the one flash and just how you sort of bounce it and direct it you can get all these different sort of effects so this this is a very um very classic and, and i use this technique all the time too um just you know what if you don't mind i just want to stop sharing because i think you might find this interesting well, that's loading. Can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I've got two Susans in here. The first Susan wants to know, would you do anything about the light in her left eye? It was the left eye. I know she's a, she's a doll or figurine, but, um, and, and maybe that's why it caught a lot of light. The other Susan wants to know, what do you do about the pupil size when you have a live subject? Is that something you need to? Oh, about? that's such a good question. The pupil size, yes. So, um, and I assume that means like if you're in a dark space and you take the flash, and their pupils are ginormous. Um, so, some typically what you can do, the real, there's nothing you can do with it with a flash like this. This is too small, but on this one. I'm just turn this guy guy on. So this flash, all all profile, and I think um, I think like Canon and Nikon and whatever, you know, they have modeling lights. So on the back here it says model. So I push that on, this lights up. You know, this there's this little light down here. Now, if they're if you have that on and they're looking at it, their their pupils will adjust for that, and then they'll be sort of uh, look like they're cats mm -hmm. about to stalk prey or something. Um, so let me turn that off. But on this one, I'm about to blind everybody. This is super bright. Yep. I mean, this is like you know, there you don't have to worry about. It. So what I do is when I put my modifiers on this, my big soft boxes, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, and they're and this is in front of them, and they're kind of looking at me or whatever. Their pupils are are adjusted. It's fine, but it is definitely something that you have to look out for. Um, what I wanted to show you, uh, let me just open this. Can I ask another question? Please. Um, Susan wants to know what happens to the background if you're working outside versus being inside a studio. Ah. Uh. Such a good question. Okay, so yes, um, 
Give me a second on that one. We're, we're going to get to that. That's, that's how you work with ambient light and flash. So I'll talk about that in a moment. But before I do, I just want to share, this is uh, my website because it, what we've done, I want to show you how I use those techniques in actual photos. So the first one with Moana that we had was really, that's this photo, like this, literally this. It, there was a light to her side. It was fairly close to her. The background was actually a light gray. It wasn't white like this, but it's that effect. So when you bring the light close, we get a soft light with a nice fall off, and then the background kind of goes away. And that's this setup. So I just showed you that. Then another one. Um, hold on one second. Oh, I was going to say, I'm there. What, what's yes. that? <laughs> get that big so, across. <laughs> So another one is this. So do you see in his glasses, this white, yes. you know, sort of shape? That's an actual huge white board. The flash for this is actually behind him and it is above his head, not even lighting him. It's facing the white board and he's just getting the reflected light. So it gives this really wide, almost look like he's being lit by a large window. Mm -hmm. which is kind of essentially is. So that that is the same as this technique here. Now this one, you know, is a little dark, but um you know, I would boost this up a little bit or something. But it's it's essentially you know, a very very similar technique to this. Absolutely. Um what else I want to say about that? Uh yeah, let's talk about the ambient light for a second. Um okay. Ambient light because that's, a, that's another, oh, sorry, just to go back to my website for a second. Uh, I'll just want to show you a photo that that pertains to. So another quick question about sure. the glasses. Do you normally, this is Jason asking, do you normally mm -hmm. allow the glare on the glasses? Uh, it depends. If the glare looks good, which I think it did in that one, I thought it was really cool. I do. Most of the time I don't, because uh, then it's some round thing. You can't tell what it is. So the, the thing about glasses is, you just have to make sure the light is at a particular angle, you know, up and above. And, you know, you have to kind of play with their head a little bit. Some people have those glasses that are like Coke bottle, uh, lenses, you know, and they just pick up everything. It's, it can be really tricky. You just have to kind of play with it and see. Um, so let me, uh, let me go back to this. So the question about ambient light. So that's this photo. Let me show you that. Um, I love so, this photo. <laughs> this is a quite a highlight of my summer, actually. This. So this is taken outside. In, you know, they were standing in a lake. This wasn't like photoshopped or anything. And my assistant was holding a large strobe, you know, with a big umbrella, camera left up high, just as I was holding it with Moana, kind of that same kind of angle. And this is a combination of natural light and a strobe. And you get this very painterly, almost surreal kind of but very balanced uh, look. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, right now. I'm going to stop sharing. So I'm going to go back to capture one. So the trick with combining flash and natural light is you expose for your ambient light first. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to turn off the, the flash now, because remember I have that, when I turn the flash on, I can't, I'm not getting a true representation of what my camera is seeing. I'm going to turn the flash off and I'm going to take a photo. And yeah, that's right. So that, that looks, you know, it's all black. So now I'm going to start um, raising my ISO or I can lower my shutter speed. I mean, she's not moving. So it's just a question of what effect I want. So I'm going to lower my my shutter speed a bit. So I'm at a, hold on, let me, uh, so you can see my changes here. So you can see the camera details. 
So let's raise my ISO. Okay. Now, when I do this, I like to have the ambient light slightly darker than normal, so slightly underexposed. So let me let me take a photo. Okay. Now I'm in this room with sort of yellow light ish. So I'm going to show you why we use these um, these little gels here in a second. Okay. So I took that photo. And now I want to add the stroke, the flash into this and let's see what happens. So first thing I'm going to do is let me just put this little diffuser back on. Turn this on. And I'm on TTL. I'm going to let the, I'm going to let the, uh, actually, I'm not going to do TTL for this. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to lower this a lot and I'm going to just see what happens. Okay, so way too bright. So the problem there is I can't get this light any lower. And the problem is this is not a very bright room. So I have to raise all my settings on my camera to expose for this. So this is overpowering it. So what do I do? Let's, let me think about that. Um, Yeah, I can't, this is a case where this flash is too bright for this scenario. Like if I was out in daylight or someplace where it was brighter, I could do this. Um, but basically what I would do is lower this. And I, oh, actually, I know what I can do. Hold on. I can bounce it. So I'm going to bounce it because if I bounce it, it's going to lower the intensity of the light because it's it's hitting something and then reflecting back. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with Moana earlier. Let's try that. So the flash is on the lowest setting and I pointing, I'm pointing the light up at the, the white sheet here. And let's see what this does. Okay, not quite. So I'm gonna compare that to the first one. See, not not this one. I'm going to get rid of that one, but I want to compare it to my my base. So if I put these two side by side, so this is the one where I added the flash. Let me make it a little brighter so we can see. Unfortunately, this isn't a good example of this, but um, I think the, the lesson is, like I said, you expose for your ambient. And then you add your flash as like another layer of light that you then control the brightness of. So let's try this again. Let's see if I can get. Uh... So I, I, I made the uh, flash a little brighter. May not be bright enough, but let's see. Oh, there we go. So you know, so now you can see. Now here's the. This is the problem with color temperature. This flash is very blue compared to the light. So you like for, you probably know that, uh, you know, during as the sun setting in the outdoor is blue, bluish inside with your warm lights. I want to show you this graphic real quick uh, that I had for this exact topic. So this is color temperature. I'm going to share this screen. I realize we're, my gosh, the time goes so fast. Yeah. Um, geez. But I'm not so, cutting off just so you know. The what? I don't cut you off, you know. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. I so, wrote it all. And I have there's a lot of questions, not a lot, but there are quite a few questions. So you're not you're not done yet. Okay. So I want to just show you. So this is color temperature. So um light has a different different color from sort of blue to warm. You know, we know about this. This is white balance on your camera. So what I need to do is I need to balance this flash, which is around 5,000 Kelvin. It's sort of like this neutral daylight, essentially. It's it's balanced for daylight to this more warm incandescent where I am now. And I don't know, I don't know which one of these it's gonna be. The one is, um, let me turn this off. 
you know, so one is actually less than the other. One is like half. So I'm going to start with this, uh, this one. And they, they have different, um, you know, they have uh, different ones. Like, so for example, there's this greenish one for fluorescent light. And then this is like a less orange. This is like a quarter. It's called a quarter orange, half orange. Are these called this, gel? Is this these are gels. These are these. That's what these are exactly. And um, so I'm gonna. This is this is. Uh, it's called, they call it CTO. This is color temperature orange. So I'm gonna just start with this one. I'm gonna try that. And uh, they go in these little. Um, little things come apart and you stick them in here and then you these these are magnetic and then they just snap into place I don't have to align up a little dot it's hard to show you and do it at the same time okay there we go so i have got my little gel and it uh the other great thing about this system by the way it's magnetic so they stack so i can take this off the grid I can put the gel on and then I can put the grid back. So now I have the gel and I've limited it with the grid. So I have color and I've got control. So I've done that. There's one big thing I forgot to tell you all, but we're gonna get to it in a second. Um, okay, so here we are. Um, and also I may have to boost my brightness a little bit because when I add a gel, it, it makes the light a little darker. So I'm going to just, I don't know, I'm going up like 0.57. I mean, the number, whatever, you'll just kind of figure it out. And let's see, let's do this. Okay. Okay. Let's see. No, oh, I have to, I have to share the uh, screen. Okay. All right. So we definitely got rid of the blue. We don't see that blue light anymore, but it's hard to tell. There's really much difference. Let's try it again. I'm going to go even brighter so we can really see a change. Oh, there, there we go. That's too bright. Hold on. But but we're getting there. This is this is what I want to do. So it's really just a matter of tinkering till you get what you want, right? Absolutely. And I do this with my clients. So my clients sit there, God bless them, and while I do all this stuff. I mean, it's not like they walk in, they sit down and it's gorgeous. Like there's 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 a time and, 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 you know, don't be afraid of that. If you're doing this, like it's expected, you're not, people look different, like their positions different, things change, but yes, you're, you're just kind of trying it out. So let's try, there we go. Now it's all yellow and weird. So now I'm going to just take my white balance tool. There. Wow. Now let's compare that. Let's go now. I'm going to white balance this one too, so we can do compare apples to apples. And that's a perfect example. So the ambient light contributes to filling in the shadows and these dark areas, but then there's just like a natural sort of yeah. kiss of light. I would probably dim it down a little bit more, but you get the idea. Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead and go to your questions. Then there's one big piece of information I have to um okay. Uh, okay, so Vernon's curious, what software do you use on your computer with a flash? Is there any software that you're... No, this is just uh, my computer can't control the flash in any way. Um, the This is just Capture One, and it's just, it's just where the images are going, but I use no computer software for the flash. Okay, and then... Um... I swear there was another question. There is another question here. Um, Jason's curious. Do you show the client the difference as you move the flash or tweak the experience? Yes. I, so I am, uh, one of the things that I've learned 
being a portrait photographer, I think being any kind of photographer, that's why you have groups like this is very solitary a lot of the times. And you just don't know what other people do. And I'm sorry, I get this is a long answer to your question, but um, I found that a lot of my actor clients were really surprised I was showing them the photos because most, or not most, but a lot of photographers will do the shoot, not show the clients. And then like a week later or something, they get a gallery and they see everything that they've done. I am really, really big on showing the clients everything. I, they see, I mean, if something is like completely wrong or whatever, I won't show them that as I'm just tweaking stuff. But I always show them changes in light because it helps them as a subject to understand what they did with their eyes, how they turned their head, I do that. I could show you all kinds of examples of that, of giving them direction and then them being able to see what that does. And the lighting is a big part of that too. And too, sometimes, okay, I'll, I'll say, speak for myself. Sometimes we know what we want to look like. So it kind of helps to see what you guys are doing on the other side of the camera so that we can adjust and communicate back to you. Like, I don't like that side of my face. Yeah, so. absolutely. And and I'll tell I'll tell you, I mean, this is a whole other thing, but I can't tell you how many times people thought, oh, this is my good side. And it was like, really? I think this is your, <laughs> you know, and they see like, yeah, no, you're right. I, that's really weird. Lighting makes all the difference. It's also really important when you're doing a portrait shoot, put the light on this side, do all the stuff and then move it to the other side and then do all the stuff because it's going to be different. It's not just about good side, bad side. It's good side, it's one side, another side, and then a light on one side, light on the other side. It makes a big difference. All right, this is, the, this is the question I'm curious about. Susan wants to know, for those of us who might wanna try it out before investing in something like ProPhoto, um, I think that's what's called, ProPhoto. Yeah, ProPhoto, that's what it, I use, yeah. Um, is, or Godox with it. Um, yeah. Or is there something that you'd recommend for those that just want to try it out or should she just jump in, uh, jump in and invest? Well, I think you can rent it. If you have a camera store, you can rent these things. Um, I, that's what I would do. They, I, it's really not expensive to rent, rent these lights. Um, I would, I, I cannot stress enough how much it is about trying and playing. Um, I would also mention that going onto YouTube, searching for anything like that, there are great yeah. videos on how to do all this stuff. Um, you, you just have to kind of get a feel for it. And this is, I was obsessed with this when I got started in terms of how do I do it? How do I get it right? I think I had to like figure it out. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite uh, courses is called the Lighting Series by Felix Kuntz. Um, I'll put his name, I'll put this in the chat. Uh, it is probably, uh, I mean, this is what I used, to be honest, when I was getting started, uh, the lighting series by Felix. Uh, you can Google it. And he really, I love his approach. He's a, he's a great teacher. And he's like, forget numbers, forget, you know, taking a meter and looking at it, because it's all digital now, you don't have to take you can just see it and then make your adjustments. But he really shows you how to great, get great results. And he's doing a lot of the same things that I'm doing here. Okay. Um, I think, did you answer the, um, if you did, it's because I didn't understand it. What happens to the background if you're working outside versus the studio? Did you answer So that? it's it's the same, it's, well, the background is, if it's like a lot of back, you know, if it's deep background, like trees and whatever, nothing's going to happen to it. So that was the, this was the scenario that I just did with Moana, where you expose, you turn off the flash, especially if you have a mirrorless camera, because if you don't, it's going to brighten everything and not look right. Turn off the flash, take a picture and be like, okay, that's, this is my base. This is my base you know, um, like the one that I showed you with the guys in the lake, imagine, I, I don't have the, the photo, but imagine without the light on their face, that whole background, that's my base. So you take that photo first and no, and you keep your camera settings there. You don't change your camera settings at that point. And then you add the light and then you adjust the brightness of the light to add the, to fill in or give the extra. And that's what we did with Moana just now. 
Okay. Um, I think I'm out of questions. I have one final thing. This is very quick and a little technical that I have to say. So the bit about shutter speed, when you use a flash with uh, on camera, off camera, your camera has a maximum shutter speed that it can uh, use with a flash. It's called the, the camera's sync speed. On a Nikon, it's one two hundredth of a second. What that means is if I go faster than that, and I could, I can't show you an example of this and I'll explain why in a second. If I go faster than that, you'll sometimes see the shutter move through the frame. So you'll get like a flash, you'll get that exposed image and you're gonna have like a black bar or you know this way or this way. And that's the shutter coming in because it's moving faster than the, than the flash of the strobe. So what you wanna do is you can do your flash sync speed. Every camera is different. You have to look up what is my camera's flash sync speed. And it's, I think Nikon is one 200th of a second. I think Canon might be one 160th one of a second. You can go lower than that. You can go slower. Like I can do 180, 50, 60, whatever, but I can't go higher. If you go higher, you go into something called high speed sync, which not all flashes support. I'm not even going to talk about it, uh, but just just know if you go if you if you change your shutter speed, you make it too fast. If you see those black bars, that's what's happening. You've gone beyond. You have to go back to the to the sync speed on your shutter. Sorry, I just had to get that in there. I forgot to say it, it was important. Okay, um, I like this message from Jason. He says he has a set of gels and a grid that came with his flash, but he hasn't used it yet. So he has a better idea. So yay, you got somebody to like <laughs> pull up and try. <laughs> I, I have a convert. Somebody. <laughs> It's a lot of information, Stephen. You know, I will admit, I am very intimidated by Flash. Um, I've had a couple of people um, teach classes on Flash, and I and I finally bought some. I think after um, Jama's presentation, I I think she persuaded me to. All right, I'm going to buy it, and I've pulled it out of my out of the bag, but I still haven't used it. So I think when I find some time here. The birds in my backyard are going to be my subjects to practice. On. Well, so that's a, well, that's an interesting point about the birds. I obviously haven't photographed birds with a flash. I'm just trying to think. Someone I mentioned think you on should here. try it. <laughs> but I, but it's the distance thing. I don't know how how close do you typically get to birds because well, I think one of the things that I purchased was that better beamer, and it's one of those. Things I see. So it just like focuses it right on, like yeah. A so it's more of a target. Right. Got it. So I think just the whole TTL and yeah. uh, the other words that you threw out were just a little bit more technical than my little brain can comprehend. So I need to try it. It was not, you know. Well, I just think of TTL as like the program mode on your camera. It's just automatic. automatic so right. You just put it on that and you don't, don't forget what it stands for and all that. Just that means just think of it as auto and manual. Okay. Um, everybody, <laughs> Jason made it. I think it was Jason that uh, I saw flash up there. We all need a Moana. <laughs> yes. I can't believe you didn't give that to your niece. <laughs> I know. She was visiting here over Christmas. I said, I have to confess something. She's like, oh, that's so cool. Like, yeah, it was supposed to be for you. I mean, she's 16 now. She doesn't care. But, um, but <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Well, um, all right. I think I can close the session out. Do you want to say any last words of wisdom? Uh, no, other than just um, please experiment and yeah. play and try. And, you know, YouTube is your friend. I, you know, it, maybe it's just me, but like when oh, I see God. those Moana images and you can see what's coming through with that on some of them, it it just, it's very, very exciting, I think. So hopefully... Uh, you can play and get some fun results too. Well, Stephen, as always, I so appreciate you. And I, I love it when you um, say, yes, you'll come and do a presentation for this group. So that means a lot to me personally. And um, I thank you again for your time because I know you're busy and to, to do this for, you know, me, I know it's just for me, but uh, it really means a lot. So thank you. It's my um, pleasure. You guys can connect with Stephen at gnomist.com. And if you're on Instagram, you can give him a follow at gnomist photo. And I will link that in the show notes um, so that you can just click on it and get to his website. 
Next week, Ajidia Latal will be here to share his presentation, Travel in Nature, My Ongoing Journey in Photography. So until next time, go out and create something beautiful, and I hope that we see you again soon. Mm -hmm.